Hey friends, you're watching Brainstorm Makers. I'm Henry. And I'm Irene. Today we're going to continue with part two of Are You Fit to Homestead? You may have heard us say in the past that homesteading is a state of mind, and I really believe that. What do you think, Irene? Yeah, it's a, it definitely is. You have to have a certain resiliency in your attitude towards things. You have to be willing to recognize that a choice you've made is wrong for your environment, whether that environment be your physical environment or your finances. Now we have to look at things a little bit differently, and some of the things we did this fall I will probably do differently next fall. And we'll have to. Because there's just been such a change. But then, you know, you're watching the forecasts and you're you're making a guess. You're always making, you're playing with the dice. <laughs> you know, what's going to happen when I, when I do this this year? You know, there's a lot of different ways to homestead. You can be really, really out on the edge. You can go out in the middle of the pucky brush where there's nothing around and have no power, no water. No flushy toilet, no showers, and live a Daniel Boone lifestyle if you want. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Or you can be homesteading in a condo or an apartment in the middle of the city. Right. It's all a matter of your attitude and what you're going to do. Now, we happen to live kind of in the middle between those. Right. We're, not, uh, we're definitely off-grid. We have no choice. We can't be anything else other than off-grid here. Uh, we have most of those blasted suburban amenities that those women like. Uh, you know, I like having a dishwasher. I like not having to do my laundry. I've done my laundry before in a bathtub. I don't really think it's that much fun. Yeah, we've, we've done laundry in a bathtub. We've done it in the shower. We've done it in buckets. And sinks. Uh, well, just all kinds of stuff. It's not my idea of a good time. I want clean laundry, and I want not, not busted knuckles from scrubbing it. <laughs> now, one of the things to keep in mind is that if you're young and you first start homesteading and you really start building a homestead from scratch, a piece of raw land and you build all the pieces up, it's easy to forget that one day, if you're lucky, you're going to get old. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's and that's exactly a good way to put it. We actually watched uh, one video. He rolled a tractor over on himself. She had to, and she sort of just, she went back to civilization because she could not live by herself out in the sticks. It's not that she didn't want to live in the sticks. She loved it out there, but it was too, too hard. Much. Too hard. Too hard. It was too hard. Yeah, it was too hard. Accidents happen. Accidents happen anywhere you live. You're going to get hit by a bus if you live in the city. <laughs> now, when we design this house, and we'll do a tour of the entire house at a later time. We'll show you more of what we did, but... My father was suffering from a progressive debilitating disease and he needed to have handicapped access to a shower, to the toilet, generally to the bathroom, and my parents had a bunch of modifications done to their home in order for him to be able to continue living there. Right, and their home was actually unmodifiable in some ways. I mean, they could have put in an elevator, but he couldn't use the second floor. And I see people a lot of times not taking into consideration the fact that, okay, so say you're young and you're spry and all that kind of stuff, and you break your leg. Sorry, Charlie. Okay, uh, now you can't get to a part of your house. Okay, well, if it's just a six or an eight week stint, that's unfortunate, you can get past it. What if it's a two year stint? Because you really messed yourself up. Yeah, so when we designed the house, it's all one floor. Mm -hmm. It's one level. And to go from the ground outside up into our house is about a six or eight inch step up. Right. It's just it's a standard legal step. And if we had to, we have enough room that we could easily create a ramp environment. Ramps would be very, very easy. We mm -hmm. actually have four, we have four places, five places in the house where we could actually set up so you could roll the wheelchair in. Mm-hmm. It's not a particular problem. When we designed the bathroom, the shower is large. Mm -hmm. 
both of us can fit in it very easily at one time mm -hmm. and not be bumping into each other. There's no there's no doors. It's a large step-in shower. It does require you to be able to step over a step. That's doable no matter what your situation. I mean, we actively looked at this. We read, There's actually a book that we have somewhere in our stash here on building uh, a house that is fully accommodating for the rest of your life. Things like making the door a little wider right. so that you could get either a wheelchair or a walker through them. I've got a girlfriend who's younger than I am by quite a lot who uses a walker a lot because of an unforeseen debilitating disease that she developed. You can't, you know, life doesn't come with guarantees. If you want a guarantee, buy a toaster from a big box store because yeah. <laughs> they'll give you the warranty. Our bathroom has the appropriate wood blocking inside the walls so that if we need to have handrails, mm -hmm. we can put them in. Right. It's not a big retrofit. It's a matter of drilling the holes through the tile mm -hmm. and putting the handrails in. It's kind of like we, we're watching a couple of young couples right now and they're putting in loft areas for their kids and stuff like that. And that's so cool. I mean, as a kid, I mean, loft areas are just the neatest thing on the face of the planet. But you don't want to create them as a mandatory space for yourself to use when you get older. You want to have as much of your storage easily accessible. We don't do stairs here anymore because we just don't. I mean, Jack doesn't know what to do with stairs because he didn't grow up around. Yeah, there's no stairs in our house. And we did that on purpose. We, we were trying to create the most, the house with the greatest longevity. You need to think about that when you build. You need to think about, can you maintain the house? Can you navigate the house if anything goes wrong. Uh, you know, we don't like to think that we're going to be hale and hearty till we suddenly die in our sleep at the age of 100. That's really not the reality for most people. We have friends that, that we know through YouTube who are doing some really great building projects. Uh, we, we watch one group in West Virginia. Mm -hmm. They're doing a fabulous job building their home. Mm -hmm. It's just the two of them doing the work, mm -hmm. which is great is a style of construction that they could do by themselves. Right. But one of the things that they will have a problem with one day if they stay in that house until their old age is they have some stairs they have to go up in order to get in the house. Right. We decided not to do that. We could have easily chosen to build this house that required real stairs to get up into. Right. Now, they have enough room there, and that's another thing is, you know, if you have enough room, they could build a ramp. They absolutely could. They have enough room there. But there are other places you see people doing things and you're like, there's no way around that. Unless you can put in an elevator. There's no way around that. Yeah, you know, there's a lot of ways that you can build today. There's a lot of really on the edge materials that are engineered and will do well. But some of the building techniques don't necessarily lend themselves well to future modifications. For mm -hmm. example, we have another group that we follow, who's building a really nice earth bag home. And the problem is that the stairs going down into their bedroom are pretty steep. Well, the ones they have right now. I'm not sure what they're gonna eventually do, but one of the things to keep in mind is that what looks good today, in retrospect, when you get older, may not be the thing you want. Right. You know, we're both in our late 60s. Mm -hmm. We're reasonably Sound. Yeah, yeah. But I, I wouldn't want to have to go up and down, for instance, a set of spiral stairs multiple times a day. I just really wouldn't want to. I mean, I've been places where that was the only way into a loft area. And depending on the stairs, some of them can be really uncomfortable. If you wear bifocals, it can be problematic in terms of seeing the stairs correctly. It, it becomes a real slip fall hazard. Just, you know, if your knees give out, you know. It's a problem. I mean, uh, some of the castles that we climbed around in 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 Europe. Wow, some of those stairs yeah. were just wow. You know, you're hanging on to the stair rail, going, "Okay, I can do this." <laughs> you know, and we were a lot younger and and uh, more spry in those days. So yeah, that was twenty years ago. It was so that you know you have to think in terms of longevity of your building. Can you use this if you hurt yourself? Can you use it if you it's a temporary hurt? Can you use it if it's a permanent hurt? Can you use it if you just get old and creaky? Uh, or you if know. you have a car accident. Or if you have a car accident, yeah. I mean, you don't, you don't plan your accidents. You, stuff just happens to you. Life happens. 
Yeah, I plan to go off the road to 75 miles an hour. Uh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't. Yeah, right. Uh, so, you know, it's it's one of those things that you you have to think about. Both of us are excellent cooks. We both like to cook. Unfortunately, for, for a lot of the things that I like to cook, that means I make a lot of dirty dishes, a lot of pots and pans. He's a messy used. cook. <laughs> I'm not a messy cook. I just use lots of pots and pans. You know, she doesn't complain about eating my cooking. No, usually, no. <laughs> He's a good cook. Now, a lot of times when I'm going to be doing something that's fairly involved, let's suppose I'm going to make a certain kind of a stew or a certain kind of soup, I'll make an extra large batch. Right. And then we'll plan to can it. So right. we pressure can it. It's not quite as good when it's reheated out of a pressure canned can. I think the two kinds we're making right now are just as good reheated as they are fresh, to yeah, be honest. I think we have a little bit of a difference there. I, I prefer my carrots not be quite as squishy. Oh, well, that's true. I prefer my carrots not quite as squishy as they come out in a, in a canned soup. But other than that, the flavor is definitely there. Yeah, so I, I'm not necessarily a big one on creature comforts, although I really like a hot shower. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm... I've had enough of cold showers. I don't really, I'm not really interested. <laughs> cold showers in are great when it's 95 degrees outside. Not so fun when it's 14. No, no. And then you have to think about the fact that you have to be able to get yourself dry before you go to bed. So creature comforts, <laughs> what today seems like a creature comfort, I guarantee you in 10 years or 20 years or 30 years or 40 years right. is going to become a necessity. Well, and not just that, but one of the things that we've talked about actively when we built this place is homes are sold on the normal market out here. And the things that the buyers want to know is, was it a permitted home? Uh, we are under an old system out here because we got in under the old system. But we meet all the international, all the national building code stuff. And actually we exceed the national building code. So if somebody has the place checked out and says, oh, well, you did, I mean, our insurance company loved us when we got homeowner's insurance here. And that's another thing. Can you get homeowner's insurance? Some kinds of buildings cannot be insured. So, you know, we, we went through the relatively small expense of paying for permits for all of our buildings. Right. And now, most of those were $35 uh, permits that said, Yes, you're allowed to put that building on your property where you're going to put it. Right. They didn't insist on site inspections and so on, although they did come out to make sure we were making progress. Mm -hmm. That's all changed. One of the things that happens is that if you go to a county where you think there's no building code requirements, mm -hmm. that may be true today. For us, 15 years ago, that was the case. Right. But we looked at what was going on demographically in our county and we said, you know, sometime in the not-too-distant future, certainly while we're still alive and while we're living here, there's going to be strict building code requirements. Right, so it'll, it, and it'll be standards. It won't be, it won't be something off on the bushes somewhere. It'll be a standard code. And so you, if you build to the standard national building codes, you know you're pretty darn safe. The only time you might not be safe is if you're in a high snow load area or you're in a floodplain or, you know, something like that. It's sort of like exceptional circumstances. But you should know that anyway when you're building, if you've done your homework. We overbuild because we, I remember the, one of the building inspectors who came out to see if we were doing progress, and he said, well, I can't, I can't, I can't ask to come in the house because you're under a different system. And, and we're like, said, come in, come, come in. Come on, come in. We, if we, you see anything wrong, we want to know about it. And he's going, wow, you're putting these joist hangers on every single you know, per, uh, this, and, and, and we're like, we're going to live in this house. We're not trying to do a cheap build that's going to fall apart in 10 years. We're going to live here, hopefully, until we croak or, you know, retire off somewhere else. But we want to have the option of creating a really sturdy house. We get super high winds here, super high. And I'll be honest, there's been a couple of times when the winds were so bad that after the storm was passed, I went outside to make sure the roof was fully intact. Yeah. But this is a 120 mile an hour roof. It was designed that way. It, it, that's the structure that we bought in terms of the whims. We tried on purpose to make this place as sturdy as we could. And, and in our heads, we still looked at it and said, okay, if we had a tornado coming, 
where would we go? If you're in the house, you go into the big walk-in closet because there's no windows and there's extra, extra bracing and it's a corner, which means you've got extra bracing by virtual right. of its location. If you were outside and you couldn't get into the building, one of the masonry buildings outside would be the choice. Either one would be Either fine. Either the choice. I've been improving a lot of our infrastructure. Mm -hmm. As I said, we're in our late 60s, so I want whatever we have here to last for at least another 10 or 20 years. That's one of the reasons why we did the upgrade on the solar system, mm -hmm. because now I won't have to worry about that system apart from possibly having things break for at least another 10, 15 years. Mm -hmm. We're doing the same thing with the water system. We'll be doing the same thing with the irrigation this summer. There's a lot of things like that. At the end of it all, I do like my creature comforts. Mm -hmm. It's not that I can't live without them. It's I don't want to. No. And, you know, we've been watching a Canadian couple for, since they started. They moved out in the sticks. They built themselves a little, they lived in a, in a, in a travel trailer, same as we did. And they built themselves a cabin. And they've just gone on grid. They're well, like, you know, yeah. we did this long enough. Uh, we, we, we did what it took to be able to get to where we are. And now we're going on grid. Could we ever go on grid out here? Maybe. Not I, can't, unless they, I can't, uh, can't imagine it, though. No, because they, they, they're not likely to bring electricity out to this area. It's too expensive. Well, thanks very much for watching. We hope that this provided you another perspective on homesteading and homesteading life. Not everybody's the same. Not everybody's circumstances are the same. Not everybody's capabilities are the same. But at the end of it all, you have to be honest with yourself and with your partner or partners. Right. It's no good if you fool yourself and say, I can do this or I can do that and not be able to do it because then you'll be planning on it and it won't come to fruition. There's a ton of issues to consider. Yeah. You really need to decide what kind of homesteader you're going to be mm -hmm. if you want to do it. Mm -hmm. You have to be honest with yourself. Right. If you aren't, I'll guarantee you that you're in for a world of hurt and a world of trouble and a world of disappointments. You know, if you really want to do takeout every day of the week or several days a week or something like that... Don't homestead like we are. No, no. There's places where... I mean, uh, it's, it's interesting. In the last six months, we discovered that a bunch of the people on YouTube who were showing themselves as being homesteading pioneers out in the middle of the sticks are only like a mile and a half from town. Yeah. Okay. That's a whole different gig. And there's nothing wrong with that. Absolutely nothing wrong with it. In some areas, if you are going a mile outside of town, you can get a really nice piece of property with a that either has a cute little house on it or is appropriate for building one. And you can have a great garden with critters and all kinds of stuff. And you can still have a lot of the amenities of living close to town. And there is absolutely no sim to that. In some ways, I wish we had chosen that. It would have been a heck of a lot easier than where we are. And you could even be off the grid there. Because if we were in an area that you're capable of being hooked to the grid here, you might have to be hooked to the grid in order to get a mortgage or something like that. Well, thanks very much for watching. We hope you found this interesting, informative. Thought-provoking. Thought-provoking. That's what we'd like to do is create thought-provoking. Because... We all make mistakes. We all, you know, hindsight is always twenty twenty. You look back and say, oh, I wish I'd done this. I wish I'd done that. But sometimes people will say, oh, I've had somebody say something simple to me like, I'm going to put my solar panels up on my roof. And I'm like, awesome. How are you going to clean the snow off? And they went, oh, oh. I hadn't thought about that. I'm like, that's why we have ours down on racks, so we can clean them off. Well, look, thanks for hanging with us this long. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell for notifications because she's going to be do, doing some more crazy stuff here pretty oh, quick. Oh, yeah. Well, we've, I, we had a couple of revelations in terms of co some cooking and stuff like that recently. They were like, oh, we've got to share this with people. They'll, they'll enjoy that. It'll be, it'll be a whole other world. We'll talk with you later. Bye. Bye.